Welcome back to Teleturoan. Let's continue. For the last part of this episode, we will talk about the nervous system and how the organs of this system work together. Your body is continuously working and doing activities as you go about your day. Everything you do includes thinking, moving, and coordinating your body parts. Have you ever wondered how you manage to do these things? Which part of your body is responsible for controlling all the activities you do? Don't worry, you will find answers to these questions as we study this lesson. The human body have systems that control, regulate, and coordinate process. In this lesson, you will explore how the nervous system control, regulates, and coordinates most of your body function. The control center of our body is the nervous system. It directs the other body systems. It also receives information from the environment and makes specific body parts act on that information. The nervous system is made up of the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. The brain is the primary organ of the central nervous system, contained and protected by the skull. It receives and interprets countless signals. The brain makes up us conscious, emotional, and smart. It is the control center for movement, sleep, hunger, thirst, and every vital activity necessary for survival. The brain controls all human emotions like love, hate, fear, anger, elation, and sadness. An adult brain is approximately 1.3 kilograms mass of pinkish gray material. The brain of a baby is one-fourth of the size an adult's brain. Studies say that the size of the brain has no link with the human intelligence. The brain is divided into three parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. Different areas of the brain control specific activities. Cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. It is responsible for the higher thought processes such as memory, judgment, and reason. It processes sensory data initiating willful motor processes such as voluntary activities. The surface of the cerebrum is wrinkled. Different areas or centers in the wrinkled surface of the cerebrum interpret impulses that come from the different parts of the body. The right hemisphere of the cerebrum controls the left side of the body, while the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body. These hemispheres are further divided into four lobes. The temporal lobe is responsible for hearing and smelling. The parietal lobe is for touch and taste. The occipital lobe is for sight and the frontal lobe is for movement and speech. The cerebellum is specifically responsible for balance, posture, and movement coordination. It regulates the muscles as they contract and relax. The cerebellum is divided into two lobes connected by a finger-like bundle of white fibers called the vermis. The outer layer or cortex consists of fine folds called folia. The brainstem is the part of the brain that connects with the spinal cord. It controls involuntary activities like digestion, heartbeat, and breathing. The brain stem has three parts, the midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata. The spinal cord extends from the brain stem down to the buttock region. A body vertebra that comprises the vertebral column protects the spinal cord. It allows signals to be sent from the brain to the other parts of the body. It also receives messages from the different parts of the body to the brain. The spinal cord acts the connection between the brain and the other parts of the body. An impulse from the nerves first enters the spinal cord before carried to the brain for processing. Likewise, an outgoing impulse from the brain travels first to the spinal cord and then out to the body along the nerves. The spinal cord is also involved in reflexes that do not immediately involve the brain. The nerve cells or neurons 
are the basic units of the nervous system. Their main function is to carry and collect messages or nerves impulses. These impulses are relayed to the brain and sent back to the body part involved for proper action or reaction. There are three types of neurons, the sensory neurons, motor neurons, and the interneurons. The brain and the spinal cord receive nerve impulses from the different parts of the body through the sensory neurons. Then the brain and the spinal cord send instructions of appropriate action to the involved body parts through the motor neurons. The interneurons connect the sensory neurons and motor neurons and carry impulses between them. Let's have now the different ways on how to take care of the nervous system. Have a balanced diet and proper nutrition because the brain uses much of the available energy of the body. Avoid toxic substances such as alcohol, drugs, and tobacco because it may damage the nervous system. Exercise regularly to make the brain and body fit and healthy. And lastly, have enough rest and sleep to give our body enough time to build up energy and repair worn out tissues. We're done with the parts and functions of the nervous system. We also discuss some ways to take care of the nervous system. At this moment, let's check if you learned something. Why is our nervous system important? Letter A. It absorbs the nutrients needed by our body. Letter B. It removes waste from the body. Letter C. It controls the other body systems so that they will work properly. Or letter D. It protects our body from harmful external elements. The answer is letter C. It controls the other body systems so that they will work properly. It is the primary organ of the central nervous system contained and protected by the skull. Is it letter A? Brain. Letter B. Spinal cord. Letter C. Nerves. And letter D. Midbrain. The answer is letter A, brain. Can you name the three different parts of the nervous system? Okay, it's the brain, spinal cord, and the nerves. Thank you for your active participation. I hope you learned a lot with the series of lessons I presented. This has been Jomarik El Mapindan of Mayapyap Elementary School. See you again next time.